uh, so far. Also, um, there are Lent calendars that are out in the hallway. Um, as you'll see, there is a beautiful bulletin board that our lovely lady put together, and there are Lent. It has a calendar, a printout calendar, so that way you can keep up with what all is going on um, this Lent season. All right. Without further ado, let's just prepare our minds, prepare our hearts, and um, let's just put aside the world and let's just invite the Holy Spirit in this morning. Now if you'd open your bulletins, the call to worship. Welcome to this house of worship. Let us join in prayer, songs of thanksgiving, and proclaiming Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Bow your heads. Good morning, Father. With joy and thanksgiving, we come to worship you, our Lord, creator and liberator from the troubles of our sins. Remind us that out of your love for us, we have been called by the power of the Holy Spirit to witness your love and care for the world in the ministry of Jesus, your Son. May your peace and presence bind us together that we may be the body of Christ onto the world. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, our opening song of praise is Great is the Lord, and it's found on 2022. It's about to be Jesus 
Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Blessed to your good work. Blessed in your holy name. From Christ we pray. Amen.
25 of uh, your hymnal. Uh, we'll understand it better by and by. Good morning. It's a great morning, isn't it? Yes. Did y'all enjoy the brief little bit of winter we got this morning? Uh, quick, because it'll be gone. But it is a wonderful day to be here and to worship together and to, to worship with everyone from Facebook Live and, and it'll be watching later. It's always a joy just to gather and to worship. And together to, to worship and give of our gifts. And Emma, thank you for bringing your gifts. Where are you at? Way in the back. Way in the back. Well, you couldn't hide up there, could you? And it was wonderful. Thank you. You and Granny both, we very much appreciate that. And uh, Emma's not even out of high school. And she's bringing her gifts with her trombone to us. I think that's just wonderful. And uh, in our prayers and concerns, our joys and concerns, I should say, uh, it's, a, it's our opportunity as a people to gather together and to lift up that conversation with God, which is grace, which is certainly a gift to us, to lift it up together. Uh, yes, we, we pray um, uh, we pray everywhere. And we pray, hope, hopefully we learn to pray as a family and with friends. But the congregation has been invited to come together and to lift, thank, lift up our, our thoughts, and our loves and our concerns together. And that's throughout the Old and the New Testament. So I like to start out with joys. And new beginnings with Christ is something that we may run it by, but uh, we don't stop enough and really ponder new beginnings. New beginnings for who? For us, for the world. For eternity. Because of Christ and in Christ. And is that not a joy? It's a magnificent joy. Do we have some other joys we'd like to share? granddaughter Nella Bigger, who lives in Colorado, she's been accepted to attend Ohio State on her Roxy Scholarship. Oh she's going God. into the military, and I'm so proud of her. Aww. Did you see a rocket scholarship? Wow. So truly really very rocket scientist. I guess. I that is what it is wonderful. Be proud. <laughs> I know you have a lot of other joys in life. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to share right now? Well, I'll add in the joy that you're all here. 
Um, we also bring up and lift up our prayer concerns. And uh, all the concerns in our life are listed. The bulletin cannot be big enough. But we do. We, we lift up those upon our prayer concerns. And you can see the dates. And please take this home if you need to. Um, put it up so that you can lift one another up in prayer. And really join and enjoy that. And you know the best sound for me in the world? The sound of a child. I actually love it. Thank you. Um, and in our prayer concerns, I'd like to say Pat Ross's surgery went well. He, he's recovering. And Billy Fred Walker had some surgery, and he is recovering well. Uh, are there other concerns that you would like to add to the list? Great. I talked to Marta Hicks uh, last week, and uh, they are on our uh, shut-ins list, Elmer and Marta Hicks. And Elmer is in the hospital. She didn't uh, talk about why, but he's, he's in the hospital. She's staying with family until he gets out of the hospital. So we need okay. to Is he in the or? She didn't say. She didn't say. Okay. And as I mentioned, in our Christian sympathy, Sarah's um, friend Jason lost lost his father, and they're in Michigan right now. And Nicole lost, I found out Wednesday that Nicole lost her grandfather. And so um, both our ladies are musicians. Um, they've had a loss. Let's keep them and their families in our prayers. Now let us go to the Lord our God in prayer. Almighty and heavenly God, what a beautiful day as all days together, to gather in your name. We fully admit, Lord, it is a privilege to answer this call. And we thank you for you have not forsaken us. We thank you for, you, for your forgiveness that you pour out upon us and the love and the mercies we ask you that you will guide us as a people, as a congregation, and that we may truly be the hands and feet of your Son, Jesus Christ, on this earth. We ask that you will bless this time together. And for those who we have lifted up, lifted up by name today, who are written upon our prayer list and written upon our heart, we ask you, O oh Lord, for the touch of your healing hand, that your presence will be felt strongly upon them and your peace will reign within them. We ask you, Lord, to guide our nation and the nations of the world. May your leadership, may your leaders, may they hear you speak, and may your peace abound. And dear Lord, we admit that we humanity, but we are fallen people, and therefore there is violence. So we give thanks for those who stand between us and this violence, who serve abroad, who serve at home on our streets. We give thanks for those who come to our aid in times of accidents, times of disasters, fires, floods. Those who care for us and our mind and our body, and those who care for our children, we lift them up, O oh Lord. And ask your blessing upon them and your peace for their families. Dear Lord, it is such a joyful privilege to gather in your name. We ask that you will guide us in word and prayer and all that we do this time, this day. And hear us as we lift up the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. 
this time, we have our children's church, and you can meet meet with Rick and Bob Walters, Walton, Walter, I just changed your name, Walton, <laughs> in the back, and um, we are just so grateful that y'all are here. Why don't we sing a little bit of Jesus Love? each and every child. We ask you, dear Lord, that your blessing will be upon them, that your spirit will walk mightily within them, and they will know that they are loved by you, their God. We give thanks for their teachers. We give thanks for their parents. We give thanks for your presence, most of all. In Christ we pray. Amen. Now we'll just we'll have a prayer for illumination. If you'll join me, it's in our bulletin. Eternal God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Our scripture this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your formal way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Amen. Thanks. God. Debbie, thank you for that reading. And you've definitely got double duty today. Huh? And you're on, you're, you're filling in too. So, haven't they done great? Yeah. Today's scripture is from the book of Ephesians, as Debbie read, it's chapter 4, 22 through 24. As we begin, this is the first Sunday of Lent. We started, we started Lent on uh, Wednesday with the Ash Wednesday service to really remind ourselves of, of our mortality and our, our need for God within, within our lives and to be reminded that it's Christ who brings, brings us to life, and brings us life eternal. And so today our scripture reading, I got the, this particular verse, I guess I'll say I took the inspiration from the Bible study and that Austin was talking about the Jesus-shaped life. And obviously the name fits it very well. It's about learning to, learning to let God teach us who we're supposed to be. Who we're supposed to be in, in our heart, and our mind, and our, and our soul, who we can be, and consequently who we're not. And so in the, in the Jesus shaped life, uh, they often use this particular scripture, and that, this stuck with me. 
You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt, deluded by its lust, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourself with the new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Now Paul speaks in a way that we don't necessarily use so much anymore. And um, when he speaks of deluded, deluded by the lust, it's, you know, our minds that in, the, in the English of time, we automatically go to the, the, the physical lust, uh, sexuality, and, and it includes that, but it, it's all the great desires of humanity. Our desire, our desire for, for wealth, our desire for, for um, fame, fortune, power, all these things that make us greater than others, it's not that it's bad, but it often, we lose sight of God in the process. And we, and we think back to that great commandment that, that Jesus reminded us of, is, is, is he really took two commandments uh, out of the Old Testament and put them together and said, this, this is really the, the summation of, of, of what it is to, to love and be part of God, and that, to love the Lord your God with all your heart mind, strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And I could ask for a show of hands, but then you'd notice that I couldn't raise my hand if I was so good at that. It's a challenge. But again, this, Paul tells us to put away that formal way of life. In other words, a change is coming. Part of Christianity, a part, a large part of Christianity is about change. Now, we don't like change. Um, I am glad that my phone's no longer tethered to the wall, and I'm glad I don't have to wait five minutes to dial a phone number. But I'm also not so, not so pleased with some of the ways that cell phone and social media really works upon our mind and works upon the influences upon us. And it's just a reminder that there are so many influences that take us away from the love of God. And we don't even notice them. It really is. It's hard to notice in an everyday part of life. Because, let's face it, we're busy people. And the busiest people I've ever met have been retired. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> You're not meeting my vision of retirement, folks. <laughs> but it's true. Because it's just... Always. And it's wonderful. And I'm glad. But we did stay awfully busy. In our energy and our mind and, and our focus often gets anywhere but with God. Now we can say God gets it, you know, God has walked with us, Christ gets it. Um, it's no big deal. You know, I've said the right words, been baptized, not worried about it. But why out of those words says anything about loving God? What about those words has anything to do with loving as God loves? What about those words have anything to do with really putting, giving yourself the mind of Christ? Or accepting the mind of Christ? In Philippians, Paul, Paul is writing to the Philippians and reminding them that you need to have, you need to have the mind of Christ. And, and he goes on to talk about the mind of Christ and, and, and how Jesus had the ability, if he wanted to, to be godlike on this earth, as in triumph and like a great God and, and, and go around smiting people and doing whatever he wanted. But he said, he, as Philippians says in chapter 2, he lowered himself, basically to be like us, to join with us. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have a, we don't worship a God who does not understand. But we worship a God who does understand. We don't worship a God that has never had those moments of temptation. The entire story of Jesus would, would be 
tempted by evil, by Satan, is, is, is part of the gospel stories. We don't have a story about a Jesus that never ran into the hardships of life. We're in Lent. It's leading up to Easter. What happens, what happens before Easter? This Jesus is brutally crucified by humanity. By the ones in which he came forward with complete love. Ones who came forward and he had the audacity to, to teach against the brain. He had the audacity to stand up for the ways in which God saw the world and how God believes that humanity can live and should live and should worship and care for one another. Just want to read real quick if I can. This is from this is from Micah. Micah is an is an Old Testament Israelite who is who is one of the prophets, and he's speaking for God, and he's and he's challenging the people of Israel on who they need to be, because see they think they've got this down. They're gonna they're gonna have the they're gonna go through the right rituals. They're gonna go through the right worship, and then they're gonna go back into life. And do as they please. And both Micah and Amos really take a hard, a hard look at our greed and the way in which we mistreat one another. And so out of, out of, out of Micah chapter 6 and his first eight, and he says, He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice. And to love kindness. And to walk humbly with your God. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? It's not a big old long list. To love, to love justice, to love kindness, mercy. Isn't that what we want from God? I need all the mercy and kindness I can get from God. I get a little nervous when you talk about God's justice on me. But here we are and who we are. And Paul is, Paul is writing to Ephesians and, and, and trying to help them to understand that there is more to following this Jesus Christ than simply saying, I will. There's actually a get out of the pew, if you will, and live the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but that can off, that can be awfully difficult. It can even be so intimidating. And really, sometimes when I think about it, you know, I want to say, okay, that's great for you, Jesus, but um, you know, you don't really understand. Well, yeah, I think he does. You don't really understand about how difficult it is to make a living. Yeah, actually, I think he did. You don't understand on, on what it is to, to get along in society. I don't want to be going to society and everybody says, oh, look, a holy roller, you know. Uh, everybody, watch what you say, you know, until he leaves. That's what happens when you tell people you're a preacher and, and they don't know you. <laughs> the world does treat you different. Followers of Christ. And right now we're not what you would call the popular, the most popular theology, understanding of life, but even within our own society. Following, following Christ and being, being Christian can be really a difficult task if we go forth and truly do it right. In fact, I, I'd say it's not possible. See, even Paul, when he's writing to the Romans, there's a part in there in, in chapter 7, and he says, basically, you know, I do the things that I hate, and I don't do the things that I want to do. 
And he's talking about his response with, with the law that had been given and, and how the difficulty of, of, of following, following what he loves most, which is God. He admits, this is a difficult thing. And if it's hard for Paul, how hard can it be for me? But if we were to read on with Paul and, and read on more with read on with this letter and look at the gospels, it's not about forcing ourselves like a piece of metal being you know being extruded through a through a die or pressed and, and being forced into a different kind of shape. It's not about being like stamped out. This is who you are. It's about letting God and the Holy Spirit take you and as we have to say, mold you like clay. Mold me like clay. Make us into who we were truly meant to be. That the sermon title is, is uh, look, at, what's it? look in the mirror and see it. who do you see in the mirror? Do we know who's in the mirror? Well, if you're looking at a mirror, you're probably looking at yourself, right? But who do we really see? We look in the mirror and we see the person that we have become. We, we look in the mirror and, and, and well, as I alluded to, or maybe you said right out in the, in the newsletter, you know, I look in the mirror and, and sometimes I'm, I'm come with my hair and I go, who is that old guy? <laughs> what happened to that 20-something? He looked a lot better. <laughs> Within my subconscious, there's this kind of false image of, of who I am. I like it. I think I'll keep it. <laughs> but within us, if you look at the book of Genesis, one of the things that makes us human, separates us, is the image of God. You, my friends, have been embedded with the image of God. The love of God. The love of God for, for, for to love the Lord back. The love of God to, to love creation. To love one another. And it's an image that we just tend to bury deeply. Because it's inconvenient. And sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes it's just costly. And sometimes it's just not as fun. We think. We have this image of who we are. And I'm a psychologist, and, and, but I think a lot of psychology would, would follow this, that a lot of our personality has been shaped over the years in our life. And they say those first few years in life do a lot to making us who we are, who we believe we are. There's, there's the the need to protect ourselves. And we literally have a lot to do with who we perceive that we are. Who is Rick Davis? Well, I'm a preacher. I'm a husband. Father, grandfather, friend, son, brother. But is that who God created? Or is that more of a reflection of the world around me? Is that more of a reflection of, of the influences and marks that have been put upon me over the years? I think that's what it is. I hate to speak to myself like an it. I like myself, I really do. <laughs> but there's something better. This image of God, which is, which, which is buried so deeply within each and every one of us. And this is what Paul is trying to get us to realize and to understand. That there is something even better within us. But we can't see it because the, the desires of humanity are not necessarily the desires of God. The desires of humanity are not necessarily the desires of God. So when we look into the mirror and we look at ourselves, what we want to see is what really reflects our own our ego, um, 
what we've done, what we've accomplished, that's all good. But who are you really? I want to take ownership of being a child of God. But often I put this false image of who I am in the way of it. When I look in that mirror, I don't see what God sees. I don't see the potential that God sees. If I had only seen that potential many years ago, I would have been in the ministry many years ago. But I had no concept, no reality, and it still blows me away. We don't always see, but I think very few truly are able to grasp who we really are. We say your human worth is uh, being being human itself is of sacred worth. Why? Because you are precious to God. Because God has has put within you the seeds of goodness, the the seeds and the ability to, to open ourselves up and to hear that Holy Spirit speak and to accept that Holy Spirit and then to follow that Holy Spirit. Because God does not, God doesn't read our signs very well. God doesn't, God, God's not so good, I don't think, that of, of following in the correct paths that we've built. There's some exits that the Lord misses. There's some entrances onto new highways within our lives that the Lord takes and we don't particularly care for. Yes, Christianity is about change. But it's not a change that we have to do, especially ourselves. It's more a change we get out of the way for. It's more a change we look for. And the time of Lent is a perfect time to say, okay, until Easter, it doesn't matter when you start, hopefully the sooner the better, but until Easter, I'm going to do some practices that I will, that will open me up and allow God to go to work. Spiritual practices, prayer, more prayer. Spiritual practices as in allowing God to go to work with us. And actually letting God Speak through us. Actually allowing ourselves to love even though we're not loved back. Not because it's going to get us ahead in our world view. But because it, this is what it comes down to. There is a greater world view than ours. It's life of God. We speak flippantly almost about uh, eternal life. But here's the question. If we don't want to spend this life with God, what in the world makes us think we want to spend the eternal life with God? If we think that living with God is boring now, what about when it's all encompassing? The opportunity that God has given humanity it knows no bounds. It reaches to each and every soul. And it reaches to us. And the church in particular, it has been created to be a voice for this change that God is doing in the world. Yes, we need to come together like we are today. This is so very important. Without, without it, we, we, we end up going off on our own. And Man, have you, have, you, have you heard some of the ideas out there on what life is? Anything and everything is fine. So long as I'm happy for the moment. Are we really, do we really have a happy society? I think that's a fair question. Do we have a happy society when 
the violence, just the random violence that goes on. Certainly I'm not the only person that thinks it's absolutely absurd. There is evil that runs them up with us. There's evil that runs them up within our nation and within the world. What's God going to do about it? He's going to fill our hearts. He's looking for people to stand and say, no, I do not agree. He's looking for people to say, you know what, there's more power in this world than what you're presenting me. I don't care what your rank is. I don't, I don't, I don't care what your political position is. Because first, I'm in love with God. And the desires of God that have been planted within us, let them grow. God will change our desires if we allow. It's hard to let go of some things. And if Paul is having a hard time, Rick Davis is going to have a hard time. But he also turns right around and says, but with Christ, it's all possible. By the Holy Spirit, we are changeable in a good way. And the fear that we have, it comes from something else. It comes from a false image within us. Because I promise you, God will, has not and will not call us into something that is not good and wonderful and joyful. But is the world still going still gonna to be the way it is for a long time? Will there be some conflict? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. I ran out of words. <laughs> and everybody goes, <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, the power of the Holy Spirit is within you. And the power of the Holy Spirit is not passive. <laughs> But the power of the Holy Spirit only goes where it is invited. Together with all of God's people, we make a difference. And the biggest difference you'll make is within yourself. And I promise you'll love it. And I say that like you hadn't got it. I'm not saying that. That is a big part of the hope that we talk about at Christmas. The desires of humanity, the desires for ourselves, in the end they just don't matter. But the desires of God within us, we just gotta go find out. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. And as we close with our, with our closing hymn, this is the time you would like to join the congregation. We joyfully invite you to come forward in the singing of this hymn. That song is found on uh, 2025 of the day. As a deal.
Members of the household of God, I commend the shawls to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Follow this light out into the world and let us be part of what this light is doing. Mm -hmm. 